The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. John chapter 3 verse 16 is arguably the most famous verse in the Bible. However, very rarely do you find people who know John chapter 3 verse 17. Allow me to talk about this verse today. I pray that this one verse may change the lives of millions of people just as John chapter 3 verse 16 has. Right now, as I am speaking, there are so many believers who are living under condemnation. Satan is beating them on the head on a daily basis with condemnation. One of the devil's biggest weapons in his bag of dirty tricks is condemnation. To condemn means, quote, to pronounce to be guilty, to sentence to punishment, or to pass judgment against. Now because of condemnation, so many people see God as an angry God with his fist clenched up, watching our every move with a frown on his face, waiting in anticipation for us to do something wrong so that he can crush us under his mighty hand. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. There it is. Quote, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus revealed the heart of God the Father in sending God the Son to bring salvation. He came to seek and to save those who are lost. He came to rescue, to bring hope and healing. Jesus did not come into the world to pronounce condemnation. He came to a world that was already lost and separated from God. Satan is an accuser. There is a big difference between the Holy Spirit convicting of sin and Satan attempting to condemn you. The Holy Spirit highlights to you what you did wrong. He encourages you towards the Lord Jesus Christ. He draws you towards the Lord with somewhat of a godly sorrow because of your sin. But the Holy Spirit is clear. He shows you the problem and then reveals to you how you can get right with the Lord. The condemnation of Satan is accusatory in nature. It holds you in a place of guilt. It makes you question your salvation. The condemnation of Satan holds you in a prison. The Holy Spirit points you to the Lord for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit reminds you of verses such as 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The accuser that is Satan will make you feel worthless and make you believe that your salvation and your relationship with the Lord is based on your behavior or a list of do's and don'ts. He will instill inside of you a fear of hell even though you have been born again. He will attempt to torture you, giving you sleepless nights. He will say things along the lines, quote, Are you really a Christian with what you did? You are not worthy of God's time. Why on earth would a holy God listen to a filthy sinner like you? Just give up. Satan is an accuser. If only you could see how he's accusing you. You see, one thing you need to know about Satan is that he is a being that has been around for thousands of years. He is a spiritual being, a spiritual being that has been watching mankind for thousands of years. Satan is a good observer of humans, and he has observed thousands of Christians. And one of his main tactics that he uses on people is condemnation. He knows he can't touch your salvation. He knows he can't change the fact that you are born again. He knows that he can't change the fact that you are going to heaven. But what he can do is torture you if you let him. But what he can do is get you to question your salvation. What he can do is get you to believe in a false standard of perfection. What he can do is attempt to make you change your perception of God. What he can do is attempt to make you believe that God has cast you aside and dropped you, forsaken and forgotten. Satan is the accuser. Stop listening to him. When you fail, when you miss the mark, when you don't hit the standard, when you come up short, God is still your God. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 King James Version. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What God will want you to do is look at that condemnation and say, for there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. When condemnation comes to tell you that you will end up in hellfire, tell that condemnation, he is a liar. The Bible says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Are you not in Christ? The only thing that should make you fear this spirit of condemnation is if you are not in Christ. But you are in Christ, and you cannot be condemned by anything or anyone. Are you allowing the devil to tie you to the past? Are you being haunted by your ugly past? Almost everyone in Christ has an ugly past. You need to let it go. You need to ask God to help you let go of the past so that you will progress. This is the time to do that. This is the time to move away from the past. The past will condemn you. I know it is hard to leave an ugly past, but I am not saying you should do this yourself. I am not saying you should be trying by yourself. You need a power that is stronger than your past. You need that power to break you free. There is no condemnation anymore. Stop allowing it in you. Stop allowing it to get the best of you. Tell Satan, not today, Satan. Tell him he is a liar and he has always been a liar. Another thing you need to know about this condemnation is that it kills confidence. Every time you go to God in prayer, the accuser comes and condemns you. Your confidence will go. Anything in your life that pushes you away from God is from the devil. Condemnation is a real problem. There are so many people who one day believe they are saved and the next day they believe they are not saved because of condemnation. There are so many people who are scared to approach God because of condemnation. There are so many people who have amazing gifts from God that they are not using because of condemnation. There are so many people who have a hindered relationship with the Lord because of condemnation. There are so many people who feel God doesn't love them anymore because of condemnation whimpering and whining Christians who think God does not love them anymore. God loves you. You are his and he is yours. If one of your children does something, do you automatically cast them away and want nothing to do with them? No, you don't do that. So why do you think God does? He is a God of forgiveness, but I have committed the sin over and over again. God is tired of me. God is not tired of you. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Luke chapter 15 verses 11 through 24, Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son who rebelled against his father, took his own portion of his father's inheritance, went to a far country and squandered all in a short period of time. He soon began to suffer and came back to his senses. He made up his mind to return home to plead with his father so that he can be accepted as one of the servants. But when his father saw him from distance, he ran towards him and brought him in. Although the son sinned, his father accepted him back, not as a slave, but as a son who was once lost, but now found. God has found you from your past errors. He has chosen to decorate your life and bring you into his glorious kingdom as a child. God is not angry at you. You don't have to live in the past anymore. We never heard that the prodigal son lived like a slave thereafter. He simply accepted his father's love for him. So today, what is stopping you from accepting your father's love? What is stopping you? He is not ashamed to call you his child. Therefore, you should not draw back from accepting your new reality, your reality as a child of God. We need to get to the point in our minds are built up upon the word of God. Refuse to harbor thoughts of condemnation. Refuse to hold notions that God is done with you and fed up with you. Believe me, if Jesus was done with you, you would not be here today. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.